Hey, so some people asked me about winding clocks. I do have a thing for clocks. I have lots of cool clocks, but I have two old clocks. This one, which is made by the Sessions Clock Company, and this one, which is made by Seth Thomas. This one dates to like 1885. It's called a Seth Thomas adamantine clock. It's got beautiful copper lions and these fabulous um, columns and scroll work and inlaid stuff. It's pretty fancy. And I paid less than $100 for it at a little antique shop. Comes with a nice little key. And when I got it, the guy said, it's already wound and it, you don't have to do anything for a week. I was like, okay. And then like the next day it wasn't working. So I was afraid to wind, because I've heard people talk about like overwinding your clock. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to break it or anything. So I didn't know what to do. So the guy who handles their clocks, the guy who sells his name is Carl, Carl the clock guy, said, I'll meet you back at the antique store, you know, next Saturday and I'll have a look. So of course I go and in the back, there's like a wooden panel. I, I'm not gonna take it out right now. I guess I should for a video, but there's a panel in the back that shows you the spring and the mechanism that makes it gong and all the things. And he said to me, um, it's not wound. And I'm like, well, I was afraid to wind it. And he's like, well, you can't be afraid to wind it. And I said, well, I hear these stories about overwinding and things happening. So he gave me some good advice. Number one, wind your clock, wind it all the way. Number two, keep it level and even on a, this happens to be on a bookcase, keep it level and even so that it, um, you know, runs well because it does need, it can't be tipped backwards or forwards, that'll throw it off. So the clock has one hole here on the right, has one in the center that's kind of behind that minute hand right now, and then it has one over here on the left. And you go, well, I don't even know what, because at the time I was like, well, I don't even know what these are for. So this one in the middle has a little, if you could look up really close, there is a little plus and minus. And so that means if your clock is fast or slow, so you can make it run fast. But mine keeps, okay, today is Saturday. I last wound this clock last Saturday. According to my Fitbit, it is 223. So it's off quite a bit. So I'm going to bump it back. I can't set it to 223 because if I do, it's going to be over that hole. So let's, I'll show you how to wind it. Your key has a large opening. That's for the two large holes and a small one. And you know, okay, well, what are these two large ones for? If that makes it go fast or slow, what are these? Well, one of these is going to be to wind the clock itself, the mechanism that keeps the time. And one is going to be for the gong. These clocks make a tremendous, well, the, some people say chime. I like to say gong. So you start over here and every clock is gonna be different. You kind of, you have to put the key in gently. You don't wanna just cram it in because it's almost like a Allen key. Like it has a way that it fits in. If you looked in there, you could sort of see the little piece that has to go over. So you wanna kind of gently, you don't wanna screw it up because you'll end up stripping that. So once the key is in, then it's like, well, do I go right or do I go left? So this clock, Seth Thomas, this one winds counterclockwise. So I'm gonna start spinning it this way. And look at the minute hand, and this is how you know, if you start winding your clock and you see the minute hand jump, I guess my own hand is in the way, but the minute hand is jumping, that's because you're winding the clock. So if you're winding the gong, it's not gonna make the minute hand jump. So if you notice, I'm just doing half turns. And right now it's getting a little more resistance, but you still wanna keep going until you can't. Oh, that's it. So how do you know? You'll know when you know, stopped. Now I go over, same key, same end, put it into the other side. I'm trying to change my angle for you. And then this, so this one is counterclockwise. This side runs clockwise. So you're just gonna do the same thing. And I would say, you're talking about a clock that's you know 150 years old. It's, they're made spectacularly. Things were made in America, things were made really well. Uh, you, you wanna just nice, even pressure. It's got 150 year old pieces. So you're not gonna take it and you know, yank that key or do anything crazy. You're just gonna do a nice, even pressure. And once it gets to the end, it just told me it's at the end. So that's one clock wound. Carl the clock guy also told me, don't chase the time. 
So don't run over to your clock every single day. 225. Don't go to your clock every day adjusting it a minute or whatever. Just once a week when you wind it. I mean, I'm not, you know, this isn't like scientific or whatever. So there's my beautiful clock. Now I'm going to go do this one. And of course, if you'll notice where the holes are, um, sometimes you can't, you know, if it was uh, 222, the minute hand would be over that. So you do need to kind of be careful. I will caution you, do not wind on the half hour because they do make a little ding and do not wind on the hour because it will gong as many times as the hour is. Okay, I had to get readjusted there. I've also moved this clock a little bit. So on a pendulum clock like this that's on the wall, it does need to be level. You could get a little spirit level and put it on the top and make sure. I usually eyeball it. But now I want to uh, wind the, uh, this is, happens to be the um, time on the clock is on the right. So, and you'll see the minute hand, it's hard to see because it's a black hand on a dark background, but the minute hand is jumping. So I'm just doing these half lines of the key. Oh, you gotta be a tough guy. Until I get to the end, that's the end. Okay, so now the clock is wound. Now we're gonna go to the gong and that also goes counterclockwise. So both on this session's clock, both go counterclockwise. And I think when I was trying to wind it, I might have been trying to go, uh, I was like, oh, it's overwound. It won't budge. I was turning the key the wrong way. And I didn't know how to, I didn't know any better. So the thing with bu buying them, you know, at a, at a tag sale or a thrift store, you don't really know if it's working, if you have the key, if you have, by the way, this clock, I think I only paid like $50 for it. I needed a replacement key for it. The, the $20 for a key. So bear that in mind when you're, you know, buying those. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So my Fitbit tells me that it's 228. I'm just going to bump that minute hand a little bit. And now it's 228. And this is Saturday in my house and it's nice and quiet because Saturday is the day that I wind the clocks. And they are a little forgiving. Sometimes I try to do them in the morning. I was busy this morning. Um, I try to do them in the morning. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes it's Sunday and I go, oh, I forgot the clocks. So they're, they're called eight day clocks because they would give you, you know, that. So pick a day that works for you. Like if you're home on Wednesday morning, then your clock day is going to be Wednesday or whenever it is. I like Saturday. I'm, I'm reasonably calm and cool and collected on Saturday. So I just have two of these old fashioned clocks and I love them. And I'm going to wait until the time is ready to gong and I will catch these. Sometimes they're both perfectly synchronized and you hear them both at the same time. But stay tuned, I will film that before I close. I'll try to catch this. They do what's called a chirp on the half hour. And my other one, the sessions clock, did just chirp. So it already thinks it's 2.30. How do you like that? Isn't it beautiful? It's just a little ding. And you know, I'm used to it. And of course, yes, this does chime at night too. But my bedroom is kind of far away and it doesn't bother me. And um, of course at midnight, you know, it's gonna gong 12 times. I guess after midnight isn't so bad. One gong, two, three, four, five, six. And usually I'm out of bed by six or seven. Well, I'm always out of bed by six or seven. So I like it. It helps me, you know, when I hear the eight, I'm like, oh, I got to do this. And when I, you know, when the it gongs nine, then I'm like, oh, a whole hour's gone by and I still haven't done whatever it is. So I do like the chime. Plenty of people don't. So that's up to you whether or not you choose to wind that. If you don't want to be uh, rudely awakened every hour, you don't have to wind that second hole. You'll just have a clock that this won't, you know, the pendulum won't go. And I kind of love that. In fact, I love that a lot. So there you go. Okay, that's the Sessions clock. And it makes kind of a more mechanical gong. Sorry, I almost missed it. And the Seth Thomas clock. I'm going to give that another minute.
And there you have it. That's the Seth Thomas gong and it is, it's just a much nicer tone. And so even when it gongs, you know, nine or 10 times at night, I think it's a nice sound. 8.59, which means it's nine o'clock, daylight savings. And the clocks that I wound yesterday say eight. So the problem is I need to advance the time and get the gong to sync correctly. So it's not actually eight o'clock, it's nine o'clock. So we're just gonna take this hour hand. It ch chimed on the half hour, now it's nine. Spring is a lot easier than fall. So let's see, the time is nine o'clock. This is gonna chime eight in a, right now. Which is nice, but it's nine. So we're just gonna forward this ahead one hour. Here's your ding, and a half hour, nine. Bring on spring. <laughs> 